Okay, so we're finally ready to discuss what's inside ChatGPT. And yes, ultimately it's a giant neural net, currently a version of the so-called GPT-3 network with 175 billion weights. In many ways, this is a neural net very much like the other ones we've discussed. But it's a neural net that's particularly set up for dealing with language. And its most notable feature is a piece of neural net architecture called a transformer. In the first neural nets we discussed, every neuron at any given layer was basically connected, at least with some weight, to every neuron on the layer before. But this kind of fully connected network is, presumably, overkill, if one's working with data that has particular known structure. And thus, for example, in the early stages of dealing with images, it's typical to use so-called convolutional neural nets, convnets, in which neurons are effectively laid out on a grid, analogous to the pixels in the image, and connected only to neurons nearby on the grid. The idea of transformers is to do something at least somewhat similar for sequences of tokens that make up a piece of text. But instead of just defining a fixed region in the sequence over which there can be connections, transformers instead introduce the notion of attention, and the idea of paying attention more to some parts of the sequence than others. Maybe one day it'll make sense to just start a generic neural net and do all customization through training. But at least as of now, it seems to be critical in practice to modularize things, as transformers do, and probably as our brains also do. Okay, so what does ChatGPT, or rather, the GPT-3 network on which it's based, actually do? Recall that its overall goal is to continue text in a reasonable way, based on what it's seen from the training it's had, which consists in looking at billions of pages of text from the web, etc. So at any given point, it's got a certain amount of text, and its goal is to come up with an appropriate choice for the next token to add. It operates in three basic stages. First, it takes the sequence of tokens that corresponds to the text so far, and finds an embedding, that is an array of numbers, that represents these. Then it operates on this embedding, in a standard neural net way, with values rippling through successive layers in a network, to produce a new embedding, that is a new array of numbers. It then takes the last part of this array and generates from it an array of about 50,000 values that turn into probabilities for different possible next tokens. And yes, it so happens that there are about the same number of tokens used as there are common words in English, though only about 3,000 of the tokens are whole words, and the rest are fragments. A critical point is that every part of this pipeline is implemented by a neural network, whose weights are determined by end-to-end -end training of the network. In other words, in effect nothing except the overall architecture is explicitly engineered. Everything is just learned from training data. If one looks at the longest path through ChatGPT, there are about 400 core layers involved, in some ways not a huge number. But there are millions of neurons, with a total of 175 billion connections and therefore 175 billion weights. And one thing to realize is that every time ChatGPT generates a new token, it has to do a calculation involving every single one of these weights. Implementationally, these calculations can be somewhat organized by layer into highly parallel array operations that can conveniently be done on GPUs. But for each token that's produced, there still have to be 175 billion calculations done, and in the end a bit more. So that yes, it's not surprising that it can take a while to generate a long piece of text with ChatGPT. But in the end, the remarkable thing is that all these operations, individually as simple as they are, can somehow together manage to do such a good, human-like job of generating text. It has to be emphasized again that at least so far as we know, there's no ultimate theoretical reason why anything like this should work. And in fact, as we'll discuss, I think we have to view this as a potentially surprising scientific discovery. That somehow in a neural net like ChatGPT's, it's possible to capture the essence of what human brains manage to do in generating language.